I want to talk to you about gilt markets. I've got a chart here that shows the gilt curve narrowing amid Brexit, uh, Brexit woes. And you point to the appetite for gilts and suggest that this is telling us that markets are increasingly pricing in a no deal. It certainly is, uh, has been the case in, most, in these last few weeks that we've seen not only the gilt market but also the, the German Bund market price in uh, more political risk with Brexit also the much lower level of growth that we're anticipating in this first uh, first quarter and and perhaps it into the second quarter um, particularly in a no deal or a hard brexit situation that would really exacerbate uh, the, um, the the growth scenario as we've seen the, the revision that revision down by mr Carney down to 1.2 so this the the guilt curve is really just reflecting all of these aspects and uh, and of course we're still searching for yield we still have got to the uh, the the reserve managers, the uh, the institutional investors that need to hold UK assets, and uh, and, and are, are in fact shying away from um, obviously from from uh, the the equities and are needing to to buy these uh, these long dated. It clearly is a safe haven mm. in. Uh, in reflection of w whether you're buying equities or, or fixed income, yeah, Matt's the choice. So, well, I'm, I'm I'm looking at the pound, and I've gone back to the. Basically, to the Brexit uh, vote, right now we're looking at 129.40, which is far off, you know, the lows of 120, but also the highs since then, really, of 144. Do you think this makes sense at the pound um, at $1.30, Sandra, in light of the fact that we could see a hard Brexit? It, it, Matt, it makes sense today because the valuation, the, the, the lower valuation of, of the pound historically really brought in some, some uh, bargain hunters. It was really quite a, a, a decent devaluation. Um, we're not short of a recession that is clear, but we still have some growth in the UK. We, we, we clearly have um, still some strong businesses. They're just on hold at the moment. So to, um, to be hedging your sterling assets today, to be selling pounds, it's, it's probably fraught with a little bit of risk here because we are so close to potential decisions. Um, and so it's a little bit hard to be short, but that's not uh, without saying that we can still see some pound weakness as we we go into these negotiations, mm. particularly against the US dollar, not so much really against the, the euro, because any negative result out of Brexit, hard or no deal, will obviously affect the euro as well, so that we will see that flow through into a weaker euro. And let me ask you about your expectations for the UK economy and, and if there's any appetite for UK stocks then, because Mark Carney, to your point about the, the, the growth in the UK, uh, talks about how the fog of Brexit is hanging over the UK economy, delaying uh, investment decisions, for example. And actually, the Bank of England's assessment is that even with a deal, the growth this year is going to be the lowest in a decade yeah. in the UK, which is quite phenomenal, isn't it? In that, in that atmosphere, any reason to invest in FTSE 250, for example? Well, quite frankly, for us, we, we have been staying away for the number of quarters, as, as you remember, and uh, for, um, to stay away from, the, from domestic uh, sensitive stocks in the UK. We only are invested in our European portfolios in the UK, in companies that are showing us growth, like some um, the, the insurance companies, the, um, the stock exchange, as I mentioned, we're invested in some e-commerce uh, sales companies. Those are the ones that are actually getting their revenues coming outside of the UK. They're global firms, um, you know, household firms, uh, household companies as well. So th that's where we're being invested. But really, if I take a, a, the global portfolio, we're staying away from the UK completely.